So yeah, um, the, the first set is about networking. Um, yeah, you probably heard about uh, DNS over HTTP. Um, so the next solution, of course, is to also put that through IoT where we use co-op. So this would be then DNS over, over co-op and uh, Martin will be presenting uh, that. So yeah, give uh, a give one round of applause. Mm -hmm. I have to activate the screen share here or Is it working without microphone or Zoom? Yeah, Zoom, we have but maybe it's better for my voice. <laughs> you don't have to scream that much. So, um, yeah, um, I'm talking about the evaluation of the NSO uh, Again, I'm Martin Lenders uh, or Gary64 on GitHub, uh, if you know who me by that handle. And um, this is actually a presentation. What? When I tested it, <laughs> maybe it's just the first time I get something from the situation. Okay. Let's work now. Hi. Okay. So, um, this is actually based on our paper that we that was accepted at Collins 23 and will be published in the Packet or Proceedings of ACM on networking. Um, the just the hint the DOI here uh, does work at the moment so because it will be published. <laughs> um, so it's in September, but well, um, but if you want to read it, you can also use uh, a preprint for that. Um, it said we were <laughs> the, the Zoom says it was a uh, not off. So. I hope the Zoom people, Zoom people still hear me. Um, so, okay. To, um, out, uh, to give an outline on my talk, I first will give, of course, the motivation. Why am I doing this? Why do we want to do the NSO for core? Then uh, I talk about our design guidances, um, uh, with, where we look into, into actual uh, IoT DNS traffic to uh, give us some ideas how the protocol should be designed. Um, then I will talk actually about the NSO for core, how we integrated this into Riot, because there's actually a Riot implementation for this, um, then how we evaluated uh, our protocol implementation and give you the actual results of the uh, evaluation, and then conclude my talk with conclusion and some next step. Um, so, first, some motivation. Um, ah, yes. Um, so, um, I don't have time. Um, yeah, uh, so the typical attack scenario that you have with CNS is that you basically want to do a name uh, request and uh, then get a response back, but uh, usually that is unencrypted, so any eavesdropper can just listen in and uh, uh, look what you're doing and what uh, pages you are calling. Uh, 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 what pages you want to look at, or what uh, sensors you want to wake and not wake. And the typical countermeasure is to just encrypt uh, the name resolution, uh, in our case, triggered by the IoT device. Um, and uh, the possible solutions are, of course, already some existing one, like, for example, DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS, but also newer ones like DNS over Quick or DNS over DTLS. But the problem with these is they are not really compatible with IoT use cases. 
Um, so the first two ones are over TCP, and that typically conflicts with resource constraints that we have on the IoT devices. Uh, same goes for DNS over quick, by the way, uh, because it still uses TLS, which is uh, has, has similar problems. And um, DNS over DTLS has the so-called passive view problem, um, where basically uh, you um, can't really advertise how big your packet is. So uh, in, in intermediate hops might just drop it and say it sent a uh, frame to big uh, message back. And uh, yeah, that also that, that's just the problem on the bigger internet. And then we have the small MTU the PDUs on the link layer that we have in the IoT. And so uh, that are even advertised, but uh, normally they just do fragmentation. And um, yeah, that's also a big problem then. So um, our proposal is to use DNS over core. Um, there we get the encrypted communication that we want. So based on DTFS or OSCO, we also get blockwise transfers. So we can basically segment our packet into smaller packets and to overcome the path interior problem. And we also share system resources with our core applications. So we use the same circuits and buffer and uh, reuse the uh, core creation transmission mechanism instead of implementing our own. And that way we can save, of course, resources like ROM, RAM, you name it. So um, how do we design the protocol? Uh, for that, we looked at IoT DNS traffic, um, namely uh, from three data sets, uh, your things, IoT Finder and Monitor, are on IoTR, I don't ever know how to, trend, uh, how to uh, pronounce this, but uh, yeah. These were collected in three uh, separate studies, which you can find below here. And they were all collected throughout 2019. They contain DNS and MDNS traffic from 90 consumer devices from 50 vendors and contain uh, 200,000 queries and 1.3 million responses and 2,363 unique query names. Um, to have some baseline and see if the IoT data is maybe a bit off, we also uh, looked at an IXP data set, which was collected by a, at, at the Central European IXP uh, in two, January of 2021. This only contains DNS data because NDNS is only link local, of course. Um, there, uh, it has a sampling rate of 1 to, uh, to 60,000 packets and contains 1.6 million queries and 2.4 million responses. And but we can't really tell how unique these names are because the names were completely anonymized uh, by just giving the length of the name. Um, just one thing I forgot to mention here: uh, this why are there so many more responses and uh, queries in this data set? Is because the IoT Finder data set actually just contained responses, but for our analysis, this wasn't a problem because we can just get the query from the uh, response data itself by looking at the question section. Um, so let's have a look at the name length. Um, if we compare, if you look here at the left side, we have uh, two uh, histograms based on the PDR, uh, PDR of the uh, of the name lengths. Uh, so the name length is on the x-axis, and the density of the function is on the y-axis. Note that this is only goes to eight percent, so this is not hundred percent here. Um, and on the right side, we have also the key statistical properties of each of the sets in a table. So um, what can we say from that? Well, first of all, we can say when we look here at the, the summaries of uh, the table that the uh, that the name lengths are quite similar between the two sets. Um, so, okay, that's some good information of already, but if we look at the extremes, of uh, the function, so the minimum, the maximum, and the mode. For those who don't remember what a mode is, the mode is basically where the most values are for a certain data point. So basically what we see here in the, in the histogram, the peak here, that's the mode of this function. Um, they are basically much larger than in the IXP data set. So um, we have similar names uh, to normal internet, but we have typically longer names on the, than on the general internet. And that's mostly because all these IoT devices talk to some cloud provider or CDN, um, where we have names like 
these here where you have like some host, uh, this is the domain, and then some host name that is some ID of the, uh, for example, uh, uh, load balancer or something like that, of, of, that is that they are talking to. And um, so uh, we need some compression for DNS over doc, and we can do that because in co-op we have the content format similar to the uh, media type in HTTP, where you can basically say, okay, I'm not using the typical format now, but I transform it to something else, and this format is named that. So uh, good thing we decided for DNS over co-op. And uh, if you look at the record types, um, we see first that um, both in the IXP and the IoT, we have mainly address resolution going on, which I think for most people is not surprising. Um, but we also have some service discovery and information uh, being sent, uh, namely the typical uh, records that are normally associated with uh, MDNS or FDNSSD. And uh, some records that are these newer HTTPS records, which basically give information where to find uh, the um, HTTPS information for HTTPS connections. So um, the main resolution uh, should be favored by DNS over core, and maybe for some future design choices, we can use even use group OSCOR for uh, some encrypted DNS service discovery. And what we also saw, I think that I didn't notice this prominently, um, there are some name server uh, uh, entries here, um, which aren't that prominent here, but uh, we saw that because for those always there are also the address uh, records provided, because uh, we see it, don't see it, in, no, no, we don't see it here because um, we only looked at the query data, but in the responses we see them. Uh, main services, um, those increase the response time. And so they could be avoided with CNS over co op. So that's something to take note of. So, how does CNS over co op now work? Um, when we look at CNS over HTTPS, um, there they use the get and post post methods of HTTP. Um, so should we just do uh, as they did because I mean co is basically the HTTP for the IAT and just translate it. Um, but if you look at the functionalities and what it basically means to use this method, it doesn't seem to be that much of a good idea because while get is capital, it requires you to uh, use any data in a query, in a URL query, that means you have to encode it in the URL. Uh, that means you can't carry it in the body. That means you can't uh, use uh, blockwise transfer for the query. So we wanted to use Quora for the because of the blockwise transfer. So that's that. So uh, we looked into the fetch method, which is a new method that was introduced for Quora, which is basically plays the best of both world form and semantics um, because it's both cacheable in our own world and it's also. Uh, Carried, uh, it also is carried in the payload of our packet, so we can use uh, a And if we then look at how DNS of a call basically works, we transport our query in a fetch request, and then some doc server can use some other DNS protocol to uh, ask its DNS infrastructure what this name is translated to, and uh, get a response back uh, from a call response. So how did we integrate this into Rise? This is basically uh, our um, schema for that. Um, we have the uh, DNS over UDQ, which was already implemented in DNS. Uh, what I did for this implementation, I put the message parsing and the DNS cache uh, stuff, what DNS cache was actually then, but uh, the, the message parsing I put into its own module, and then I could use that with DNS over co and DNS over detail as which for our iteration I also implemented. I basically did as a core is that just setting sitting on top of GCore and using GCore. Um, but uh, for OSCOR, I basically needed to catch uh, this in a little bit ugly, but um, yeah, it, it, it actually works. So if you want to use OSCOR with Riot, 
Uh, look at this branch and you see how you can do it. But I think in uh, the long term, we should probably also provide a package for that. Um, yeah. So, um, evaluation. Uh, for that, we use the IoT lab. Those who were at the tutorial this morning already know that. Um, and uh, we base our main properties on what we saw in the empirical <laughs> study uh, with all the main rates. So we basically picked the length 24 because it was the mean that we saw and the median. Um, and sent uh, queries for A and quad A records of a UDP, TNTLS, or quad and OSCO, um, TNS over, of course, um, via a forwarder and a border router to a resolver. And we sent uh, on the mean five queries per second with, with a Poisson distribution. This, for those who know core of the bits, this ignores, of course, the end that equals one uh, requirement that is drafted out in the core and uh, in the RC um, because uh, uh, for, uh, for, for, for uh, congestion control rate measurements, so basically we do a congestion control for all of the for experiments um, to have. Um, more uh, constraints uh, problems that we can see. Sometimes on the complex and that will be three times on the engine. So, um, for first, we have a look at the resolution types. Um, they can see in a CDF all the resolution types on the x axis and uh, the distributed density function on the y axis. Um, and in UDP in red, DTLS in orange, uh, co op in uh, purple, and co ops and blue, and also in green. And uh, yeah, the co ops are definitely dotted. Um, and what we can see is that there are um, so, uh, three clear performance groupings visible. So the first group is basically just the UDP uh, queries for um, A records. Then for UDP A quad A records and for post and fetch, we have the second grouping. And the third grouping is uh, all the rest, basically all the encrypted stuff and uh, for the quad A records. So where do these groupings come from? Um, well, we just look at the packet sizes and see that there is some fragmentation happening on the six local layer. So we, if you look at this plot here, we have on the x-axis of both different uh, uh, message types, either query for fetch and hold, query for get, report, uh, response packets for, for A records, and uh, response packets for quad A records. And on the y-axis, we have the train size, which is divided by this red line, which is basically where fragmentations happen happening when you're using 804. And the first group is basically when there is no message fragmentation happening. The second group is when the query is unfragmented, but the response is fragmented. And the third group is when both matches, messages are fragmented. So um, in conclusion, we can say at least the fragmentation has a much larger impact on the performance than uh, the trend or the core method that we are using, which actually is good because that means the NSM core is performing as well as the established solutions when it comes to uh, the resolution type. But we have also some advantages for uh, the NSM core if we look at the memory consumption actually. Um, so we have here on this graph the RAM and the, uh, the ROM and the RAM. Oh, the ROM is, ups and, uh, ROM is uh, on the bottom. ROM is on the top and RAM is on the bottom. Um, uh, with the uh, build size and kilobytes on the y axis and the different uh, transports on the x axis. And uh, of course, UDP is the smallest of each, but it doesn't come with encryption. Same goes for core, which is similar, but also not encrypted. But if we look at uh, core over DTLS and uh, OSCO, uh, we see, um, of course, core over DTLS is a little bit bigger than. Uh, for over DTLS, just DNS over DTLS, sorry, um, because of course there's a little bit more complexity going on because of what's really put on top. But um, with Oscar, actually the uh, encrypting, encryption part is only half as big 
that's where it's detailed at. So we, if there is already a co-op application present, it is the best uh, method to encrypt uh, your DNS traffic uh, for the IoT at least, uh, because it has a smaller ROM footprint um, and only uses half as much ROM as CTLS for the encryption. Um, there, you can see that uh, here on the top that the DNS part is still a little bit larger than it is with, for example, DNS over DTLS. But that's probably something that we can optimize if we just put all the option parsing, which is currently done in this weird limbo state uh, with GeoCore between the application and GeoCore. And uh, we have to do a lot of uh, option handling in the application itself, or in this case, in the protocol implementation itself. If we just put this into the core or some new core implementation, Whatever, I think uh, there is some at least uh, optimization potential. So, to complete my talk, um, uh, we uh, found that Dog with Bench provides an encrypted DNS for the constraint IoT. It is segmentable for the stock wise transfer and it has on root caching uh, like co op proxies. Um, uh, we'll also outperforms squad in both packet and build size. And uh, for our next steps, we want to look into a concise and compressed DNS message format, for which there is also a ITF draft already. And um, yeah, uh, we also maybe want to look into an MDNS protection with Google or so. So, I am a producer of the research, of course. <laughs> Uh, you can see our artifact of our um, research um, at these two pages, both on Zenodo and on GitHub. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to look at the code of our evaluation, both the empirical one and uh, actual experiments that we did uh, with DNS over core. So, Jeff, yeah, thank you. If you look into where this slice is from, we need to ask the score to respond. What size difference do you mean? No, I mean, if you ROM size specifically. Well, uh, yes, actually, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. um, both of because uh, detail is having its own like message exchange protocol, which also doesn't use it, just use a core, so it doesn't need to establish a session or something like that. Of course, there some needs to some key exchange happen, which isn't in this because we didn't look into like uh, ad hoc and stuff like that. So this might actually increase the size of this. But um, yeah, uh, overall, because it's basically not having its own message exchange protocol, that's the main reason why it's, it's a smaller footprint. Thank you. Thank you for the talk.